as as you brought up, Namor shows up while they're doing the ceremony yep. to grieve for T'Challa. What he does is he just comes up and he says, listen, you guys have brought attention to the fact there's more vibranium. This mm. puts my people at danger. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to team up with us so that we can form a coalition to keep people away from us. Yeah. Makes a certain amount of sense, although later on it turns out to be, once again, genocide being the well, main motivator of this. But it would make perfect sense on a reasonable level if if the Wakandans were to say, okay, in conjunction with us, can you help defend our facilities? Because if we build them out in the middle of the ocean, would you not be able to provide us defences and we can both share vibranium and keep it amongst ourselves? That would make perfect sense. Instead, they just say, oh, you come here and tell us what to do. It's like, well, you have kind of screwed over the secrecy of his nation. You didn't know about it, yeah. but then he's not, he's not attacking you for it. He's just said, well, now you have obligations to me to help because we both have a common interest here. Will you? And he tries to negotiate with them first and they just tell him to screw off. Yes. So what they then, uh, what, well, what he asks them to do is he says, "What you need to do because there's a person who designed a thing that can find vibranium, vibranium detector is what they Vi actually yeah, call a it. vibranium detector, like wow. you're there on the beach with your vibranium detector, um, and that you need to find her, the scientist in America, and you need to kill her yeah. or bring her to us and kill her, yes. as if just killing the d designer of a technology means the technology just vanishes off the face. Yeah, of that the no earth. one else will ever create it ever in the future. Mm -hmm. Then, obviously, they go back and they report on this meeting with Namor to the council, and they're all sitting around wondering what to do. And our boy, um Chad, comes um in. shows up for his one of his four scenes in the whole film. Yeah, and the only one where he's not emasculated in it, deliberately in by fact, the writers. In fact, he comes across so Chad, the he's second he walks in, he looks brilliant. at the warrior women, they say something to him, and he just looks at her. You bald-headed demon! <laughs> <laughs> it's great! <laughs> it's great! Bald-headed demon! Okay, this is my thesis, just put Mbaku in charge. Like, just make him king. And it seems they might have alluded to that at the end of the film, as You've far as You've remade I've the purple drank by the end of the film, so just yes. give him some purple drank. Yeah, make... Like, in the comics, he's called Manape. They obviously got rid of that because it's racist. Well, even they still kept still... all of the gorilla imagery. Which looks really imagery. cool. Yeah, I okay. think it looks great. So, if we can just make him they a full-fledged... They still have fledged... him literally going, ooh, ooh, yes, ooh, point. So, yeah. if we can make him a full-fledged superhero just by giving that, um, that would be brilliant. I'd much prefer that and Shuri being Black Panther. And King M'Baku, he's very protectionist. So, when they ask him... when King the council ask him, constantly talks about how we need to value our traditions. Yes, and when they ask him what to do about Namor, he just goes simple. Kill the fish man. If we give him what he wants for now, what will stop him, co stop him coming back for more? It's like, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Wow, this is politics right yeah. here. This is actual political discussion and being going on. people turn around and go, oh, well, we, we, we don't have the weapons to do it. You know, he can't penetrate his skin, or we don't know where he is. I mean, first of all, you have spaceships, and they don't. Right, they just they just ride on whales with bits of rope, and two, you have pure vibranium. Now he had a pure vibranium spear which pierces the hide of their spaceships. It doesn't really make sense because you would have thought that they would have a pure vibranium hide as well, but neither here nor there. So that means you have at least some weaponry that can get through to him at some point. Or Shuri comes up with the idea to dry out his skin. So if you put some thought into it, you might be able to weaken him. So Mbaku's plan is actually pretty sensible. I don't see what could stop them if they put their mind to it, really. Yeah, you just have underwater bikes with laser cannons, because the the Talokans don't oh, have anything it, like that. Here's another question as well, which was the, the, that I saw people asking, which was why were none of the Avengers at Charles' funeral? That's an amazing point. When he literally helped to save the universe at the end of Endgame. Yeah. And given the fact that they have, and this is a problem that shows up in like every Marvel film at this point. Yeah. Given that they have access to the Avengers and the Avengers kind of owe Wakanda because Wakanda yes. was instrumental and was used as a ba battleground in defending from Thanos in Infinity War, so you could literally say, you owe us, guys. Why don't you just get, say, somebody basically invincible like Doctor Strange? Or the Hulk, which M'Baku actually references, and he says, Namor might be as strong as the Hulk. Okay, well, if he might be as strong... If you're going to do coin flip odds here, why not give the Hulk a ring and find out? He's too busy um, caring for his son and being emasculated by his cousin. Accurate. Accurate. So then the rest of M'Baku scenes, just to skip around a little bit, the next time he shows up is when they invade, right? And he's the one saying that, oh, they're going to let them in. They're all, they're all laughing at the, um, when they're standing on the bridge with his with his fellow, I can't remember what the tribe's name is, the uh, gorilla, the silverback tribe or whatever yeah, yeah. it is, right? They're all laughing. They're all bros. They're all in shape. And as soon as the Talokans attack and start flooding everything, what's the first thing he does? He looks down, he sees two fishermen get tipped over, and he selflessly throws his stuff down, 
dives down, picks them both up, throws them on the boat, and they both give him a predator handshake. Yeah, they give him the old, yeah. Absolute chad. He's, <laughs> a, good, he's a good guy who's willing to throw himself into yeah. danger for his people, but then when he's later coming uh, come asked to help in a situation that doesn't really benefit his people mm. at any point, and doesn't, and th- in fact threatens the security of the nation and their traditions, like in the first one, yep. he tells them to go away. Actually, he does even better, right? He turns around and says... Well, if you're threatened by the ocean, why don't we just go all up to the mountains where there is no way they're going to access us because they can't fly over the Well, there's a big problem there, which is apparently the river flows up into the mountains. Yeah, of course, that's how how T'Challa got there. Um, He just says, why don't you seek refuge there, then we're all safe, and we can all come together while there's this constitutional crisis without a monarch. And it's like, okay, very sensible. Again. Sense. And he also consoles Shuri when she's unsure about tradition, and he says, yeah, I did chew you out before about not being on board with tradition. You'll come around, don't worry, but I'm looking out for you. And... He says something that's slightly contradictory, which I think is just the fault of the script at that point. There is some awful dialogue throughout the entire film. He says that um, the Queen's death would be worthy of total war in terms of vengeance, but he doesn't want that for Shuri because he sees her being on the precipice of emotional immaturity and that she falls into that pit. So even though I disagree with him on whether or not to wage total war over this specific death, because it might not be particularly wise, I do agree with him about killing Namor, he is there to console Shuri and provide her guidance on being incorporated in tradition. He doesn't just chew her out. He actually shows reverence as the fact that she is the heir to the throne and says, okay, here's your time to step up. I'll help you along the way. And Baku's a really wholesome guy. I, it's funny because I read all the other interviews as well and every single interview seems to say the same thing, which is we need to see more of M'Baku. Yeah. Everybody can recognise that he's the most likeable character. Yes. And also the most understandable character and the yep. one who's looking out for his people, whereas all the decisions that the main tribe, the mm. actual uh, monarchs of Wakanda have done, is open them up to yep. more and more vulnerability. Yeah, and it's not like he's ignorant either, because when he says about, okay, I don't know if we've got much of a chance against name or even though I said kill him at first, when he learns more about him, they go, why, he's a king? And he says, no, 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 his people think of him as a god. And he's- his people do not call him general or king. They call him Kukul Khan, the feather serpent god. Killing him will risk eternal war. And he's got some kind of power by having being a child of both worlds. And then they all look at him strange and he goes, what, just because we're in the mountains, you don't think we have books? It's immediately like, <laughs> yeah, you're the only one that reads? Just Apparently put him in charge, so. it will just work, Liz, please. <laughs> you've got your warrior philosopher king in waiting, come on. But... I suppose we haven't considered one major thing. All right. It's the MCU. That is true. We tried our best, lads. We tried our best. All right. On the, with the next bit, then. The, well, that's well, let's, let's, let's wait on that for a moment, though, because it really is very clear in this film, because you mentioned yep. Umbaku the second, Namor, and the others try and attack Wakanda. Uh, Umbaku dives straight in, mm. saves some people, acts like an actual leader should, and then he tries to stand up to Namor, the first thing that happens is he just gets taken out in one punch. Yeah, and he then wheezes like a child. Yes, for comedic effect, he wheezes like a child, and everything else to do with the film is the women. All of the main characters are women. Even the side characters, like Everett Ross, is emasculated by his ex-wife. He's Who breaks into his house. He's referred to, before he's introduced, as my favourite coloniser by Shuri, Mm -hmm. and then immediately cuts to Martin Freeman. He is continually lectured by the Queen over the phone. He is continually duped by his ex-wife, who plants the beads at the crime scene to, to inform on him. And then by the end, he's arrested for treason, for conspiring with a potential enemy nation. And when he, and I had walked out of the cinema at this point, Jack told me about this, when he's in handcuffs, the Dora Milaje arrive and Okoye goes, hmm, a colonizer in chains, now I've seen everything. Yeah. It's like, He's just tried to help your nation from not being carpet bombed off the face of the earth by the US government. And he gets led around by the nose by you guys like an absolute lap dog. Yeah, he's a cuck. He is an absolute cuck. But, but besides that, every other character other than Namor gets emasculated in the film to a ridiculously insane degree. And even Namor, by the end of the film, is getting beaten up by Shuri. Yeah. You know, 
Shuri, the tiny twiggy girl from the first film, T'Challa's sister, Where'd who made the her... sneaker joke. Where'd she get all her combat training to do backflips and things like that? She yep. just drank the purple drank flower and immediately I, becomes Bruce Lee? I guess she's got a lot of time in between making scientific breakthroughs <laughs> where she can just figure this stuff out, you this know? This film gave me a scientific breakdown. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.